This video contains flashing lights, unsettling content, violent content, sudden loud noises, and is not suitable for viewers who suffer from arachnophobia, aerophobia and umtaphobia. Viewer discretion advised. SCP-178 Object Class Euclid SCP-178 is a pair of white stereoscopic 3D glasses with a rectangular white cardboard frame and lenses of transparent blue and red plastic. The item exhibits no unusual physical properties apart from a slight discoloration of the cardboard consistent with age. When worn, the wearer begins perceiving large bipedal entities in addition to ordinary surroundings. Entities reportedly exhibit a docile and occasionally curious behavior, with one exception. Any attempt by the wearer or any other personnel to directly interact with the entities result in severe lacerations suddenly appearing on the person involved. The appear of the lacerations is rapid and it continues until the moment the wearer expires. The pattern of lacerations is always consistent with being slashed with three parallel tapered sharp objects of lengths varying between 14.2 and 27.4 centimeters and maximum thickness varying between 2.9 and 8.1 centimeters. Subjects do not report hearing any sounds emitting from the entities. Long-term observations of subjects exposed to the item reveal no lasting effects. Stereoscopic items viewed through the item appear three-dimensional. SCP-178 is stored in a Class III anomalous object container guarded by no fewer than two armed personnel guards with Level three clearance when not undergoing testing. The item is removed from containment only with the written permission of the personnel with level 4 clearance or higher. Following incident 17814, all tests are monitored remotely in the presence of all personnel from the test subjects in the testing area during experimentation is expressly prohibited. SCP-2373 Object Class Euclid SCP-2373 resembles an emaciated hirsute humanoid, its skin covered in black furry bristles. Though as its lower body appears to have been severed at the abdomen, it is impossible to determine whether these bristles extend beyond the torso. SCP-2373's eyes remain constantly open. If no human subject is present within SCP-2373's direct line of sight, it remains in a dormant state on the floor of its containment chamber. If a single human subject comes within SCP-2373's direct line of sight, SCP-2373 will begin to animate, telekinetically repositioning itself directly behind the subject. This initial movement is fast. Subjects do not acknowledge SCP-2373's presence as it enters its active state, as the speed of its movements upon animation surpass human visual perception of motion. SCP-2373 will remain suspended behind the subject's back, remaining limp and occasionally shuddering. SCP-2373 will follow the subject, altering the position in accordance with the subject's movements ensuring complete unawareness of its presence. This effect continues until SCP-2373 is attacked or obstructed by a solid, where it will relocate to an environment in which one or no human individuals are present. If this is not possible, SCP-2373 will re-enter its dormant state, facing against the nearest wall, away from all human individuals. SCP-2373 bears no reflection and is incapable of emitting sound upon physical contact with external surfaces. Its movements in its active state can only be observed electronically through transparent solids or by non-human individuals. 
Occasionally, while in its active state, SCP-2373 has been known to flinch, momentarily clutching its amputated abdomen in pain. The source of the amputation is unknown, but its cut is consistent with that inflicted by a rotary blade or bands. SCP-2373 is currently contained within a Class A containment chamber at Site-19, separated from Hallway 284 by an airlock. The doors leading into the chamber are only opened consecutively upon entry. No fewer than two non-D-Class personnel enter SCP-2373's containment chamber. D-Class personnel enter the containment chamber alone. SCP-3470 Object Class Euclid SCP-3470 is a predatory organism that relies on aggressive mimicry to hunt human beings. Specifically, they resemble a Ford Anglia 105E of unclear age with a single occupant in the driver's seat. 3470's most noticeable trait is related to the driver. Although the windshield is perpetually fogged in such a way that the face of the driver is obscured when hunting prey, it will extend the driver's hand outside of the vehicle and make driving signals. There is an eye embedded in the palm, and appears to react and work in the same way as a normal eye. SCP-3470 hunts only at night in a manner similar to ambush predators. It patrols roadways in its territory, looking for solitary cars. When it identifies a potential prey, it will catch up to them, pass them, and then force them to slow down and stop it with hand gestures. Just before attacking, SCP-3470 will rotate the hand so that human drivers can see its palm. However, its method of attack and consumption is still unknown. SCP-3470's territory laps over Cibola National Forest in New Mexico. Numerous reports were compiled of automobiles found still running where their occupants have gone missing. All such reports mention the same tire tracks and paint specks on trees near the missing person's cars. Two police officers dispatched to investigate the area disappeared in a similar manner. However, they were in radio contact with other officers at the time of their disappearance, and their description of SCP-3470, particularly the hand of its driver, attracted the Foundation's attention. A dissected SCP-3470 egg and three unhatched SCP-3470 eggs are in cold storage in Site-42. Mobile Task Force Lambda-12 currently monitors the area around Cibola National Park for signs of continued SCP-3470 habitation. It's 
breeding. Right. You know the drill. Grab half of them. SCP-944, Object Class, Euclid. SCP-944 is a single-story building outfitted as a mirror maze, formerly an attraction at amusement park in. After a number of anomalous effects were observed, the building was secured by the foundation. As the building effect appears to be localized, the remainder of the park is open to the public. Periodically, individuals entering are capable of walking off the intended paths through the maze and into the mirrors. Despite extensive experimentation, the Foundation has been unable to predict where and when the anomalies will occur or the effects of walking through them. In addition, the distorting mirrors found in the Hall of Fun are sometimes capable of producing permanent distortions in the people viewing them. Handheld cameras have been proven problematic inside, as explained by the former security and staff stating that the structure causes static and interference. Signs indicating no cameras allowed found around the building also further prove this fact. SCP-944 was built in 2006 and operated normally until Incident 944-U1 occurred. It's unknown what initiated its anomalous behavior. Several different incidents have occurred over the time span of a year when the park was open. One man has emerged dehydrated and was claiming to have been lost in the maintenance tunnel for three days, despite SCP-944 not containing any maintenance tunnels. A child was found severely injured in May's Hallway B with third-degree burns to their hands and feet. They claimed that they were burned and tortured by an individual who called himself Zippo the Pyromaniac Clown. Extensive police search for the perpetrator yielded no results. A female had emerged from the maze smaller than when she had entered it. She said this was likely due to the fact that she was looking at her reflection in the attraction called the Shrinking Mirror. Foundation personnel intercepted police reports and guest complaints about these incidents. The area was secured, and Class B amnestics were administered. Use of robot drones to navigate SCP-944 does not appear to trigger anomalous effects. Therefore, use of D-Class personnel in experiments is approved. Drones would follow the D-Class through the building. SCP-944 is surrounded by a 3-meter high opaque fence both to prevent outside access and to allow experimentation unobserved by the public. It is officially listed as a condemned building, and construction area signs are posted to explain the fenced-off parts. 
Level 1 agents, wearing amusement park security uniforms, guard the area and prevent unauthorized access. Non-B-Class personnel entering SCP-944 are cautioned to follow the blue floor lines, indicating safe paths. The Hall of Fun is off-limits due to possible exposure to anomalous effects. D-Class personnel are outfitted with subcutaneous GPS location transmitters before being permitted to enter SCP-944. SCP-965 Object Class Euclid SCP-965 is a visual manifestation that occurs within framed windows. It takes the shape of a shadowed, pale, skinny face looking through the window. The exact details shown vary, as does the direction of orientation as well as the age of the person. Research into an individual matching it has thus far proven inconclusive. SCP-965 will only appear when the relative lighting on the outside of the window falls below 5 candelas, regardless of the lighting on the inside. Such terms are possible because the face will only appear in a fully assembled window frame, though it does not need to be currently installed. Thus far, SCP-965 has not shown any ability to intentionally move from one glass pane to another, even within the same installation. It is only able to attain a new manifestation point upon the destruction of the current SCP-965-1, at which point its new habitant will be classified as SCP-965-1. The face is visible from the outside portion of SCP-965-1. Initial effects caused by SCP-965 are reports of unease, nervousness, and low-grade paranoia. These sensations will overcome anybody within visual range of the manifestation, even if obscured. An individual that is sleeping in any area visible to SCP-965 when it manifests will invariably have dreams of a disturbing nature, usually involving being chased, attacked, tormented, though without physical contact in the dream. With repeated incidents involving this same subject, SCP-965 will begin manifesting with a more explicit smile than normal. After this point, the subject will begin complaining of heartburn or abdominal pain and often begin to vomit blood or have blood in bodily waste. This is caused by the victim suffering from ulcers and low-grade hemorrhaging throughout the varied locations in their gastrointestinal tract. The current hypothesis as to the cause of these afflictions is 965's influence artificially accelerating the body's reactions to elevated stress and fear levels. Subjects who advance to this stage have also reported continuing experiences of the facial manifestations in windows during dreams. SCP-965 is contained within a framed, ready-to-install window. Henceforth referred to as SCP-965-1, it's composed of at least six panes of clear glass and is kept within an environmentally controlled storage facility capable of withstanding significant seismic disturbances. It is inspected at least once per week to check for the degradation of material. At all times, two similar framed windows are present within separate chambers in additional padding and insulation. The lighting within the chamber is at a minimum of 130 candelas at any time personnel are within said chamber, except during research. Research into a permanent means to contain SCP-965 is ongoing and individual experiments are carried out by Clearance Level 1 personnel after approval from Level 3 Administration. SCP-432 Object Class Safe SCP-432 is a two-door steel storage cabinet. The exterior of the cabinet is green, 
and bears no remarkable features except small areas of corrosion and light scratching. The doors of the cabinet are fitted with a basic slide bolt and a hasp for a padlock, allowing the door to be secured from outside. The interior dimensions of 432 display significant disparity with the exterior. The doors open into an apparently extra-dimensional space containing a large labyrinth complex comprised of an uncharted series of corridors. The exact size of the labyrinth complex to which SCP-432 connects cannot be accurately measured, as each time the doors of the cabinet are closed and then reopened, the entrance created by the cabinet apparently moves to a different section of the maze. The fate of personnel within the maze when the door is closed is unknown, although remains discovered within the maze suggest starvation is a likely outcome. Other remains, coupled with additional evidence gathered during exploration, suggests that the labyrinth contains a large, predatory inhabitant of indeterminate species, hereafter known as SCP-432-1. GPS units used within 432 are rendered useless, as are cellular phones. Remote control devices sent into it are similarly impaired and cease to function after traveling an average of 20 meters into the maze, rendering remote mapping of the internal layout impossible. High gain radio transmissions can be used to keep in contact with personnel within the labyrinth, although significant interference occurs deeper into the maze. If the doors of the cabinet are closed, then all forms of contact with personnel within SCP-432 are severed. Currently, expeditions have been sent into 432 to attempt to chart its internal geography. To date, D-Class personnel have been lost within the maze. No further expeditions are made without express permission of at least two level 4 personnel. Paint samples, metal fatigue, and construction techniques date SCP-432 to have been constructed in the early 1950s. However, Artifacts recovered from within have been accurately dated to much earlier periods. SCP-432 is kept in a standard storage area at Sector 25. It is kept locked at all times, and the key to the lock is kept in the adjacent security station under guard by three level 3 personnel. No other special containment is required. SCP-432 was discovered in an abandoned industrial complex in the United Kingdom. It came to the attention of the Foundation after reports of several homeless people in the area disappearing after staying in the complex. Upon investigation, several researchers discovered the cabinet at the center of an abandoned steel mill, surrounded by a number of sleeping bags, items of clothing, and other personal effects, suggesting a number of homeless people had recently made camp there. SCP-432 was unlocked, but the door closed upon discovery. After exploring the immediate area beyond the entrance, the lead researcher exited SCP-432 and summoned Foundation personnel to transport the cabinet to Sector 25 for analysis. SCP-015-IT Object Class Euclid SCP-015-IT is a humanoid entity around 1.9 meters tall, with hairless skin capable of absorbing 98% of incident light. Its face presents neither nose nor external ears, and its eyes can emit light due to phosphors placed on its iris. The mouth has eight pointed teeth in each jaw, while the tongue, 28 centimeters long, is forked. On both points there are two hollow needles directly connected to the esophagus. Physically, SCP-015-IT presents a reduced muscular mass. Despite this, however, it is surprisingly strong and can easily subdue an adult human. SCP-015-IT is highly resilient to physical damage and can heal quickly from wounds and damage to internal organs. SCP-015-IT is predominantly active during the night and feeds exclusively on adrenaline and noradrenaline produced by mammals 
with a preference for human prey. To procure them, SCP-015-IT developed a hunting method aimed at scaring its target as much as possible. Usually it hides in dark spots trying not to be seen and stalks its victim. If it is not spotted, SCP-015-IT waits until its prey is distracted and approaches it silently, before grabbing it and biting them on the side. The bite is not meant to kill the victim, but to use the large teeth as anchors while the tongue darts forward and snicks directly in the adrenal gland. The blood, rich with adrenaline, is aspirated from one of the needles, while the second expels it with the addition of a mild sedative. This allows SCP-015-IT to keep the prey immobile without wasting too much energy and to leave undisturbed after its meal. Prolonged observation of SCP-015-IT causes psychic deterioration to exposed subjects with auditive and visual hallucinations, panic attacks, and in the most sensitive individuals, damage to the cardiovascular system. The first symptoms appear after two weeks, but this time is reduced if SCP-015-IT doesn't feed regularly. The cause of this phenomenon is currently unknown, but it is theorized that it is a method to rend vulnerable prey that would be too strong or aggressive otherwise. SCP-015-IT is contained in a standard cell in Site Vittoria, and is kept under surveillance by a system of cameras and infrared sensors. The room and the adjacent corridors are painted white and kept well lit. Two times per day, a pig is introduced in the cell for SCP-015-IT to feed. Personnel assigned to its cell take psychological evaluations weekly and are cycled every three months. SCP-015-IT was first captured on the 22nd of May, 2012, after the police of the province of Caserta received many reports of vampire attacks. Site Vittoria set the SSM-4 to deal with the menace. Due to its unsuspected agility and its coloring, which allowed it to hide in dark areas, 015-IT managed to avoid capture until it was shot with a transmitter that allowed the Foundation to trace its position. When it was surrounded, it reacted with unforeseen violence and was able to kill and wound several soldiers before being subdued. SCP-2884, Object Class Euclid SCP-2884 is a phenomenon affecting developed areas within the United Kingdom. SCP-2884 exhibits no identical pattern in the location or rate of its manifestation, other than an increased probability of manifestation in areas with relatively high crime rates. SCP-2884-1 are CCTV cameras which appear in areas affected by 2884. Instances of them appear only in locations outside of the view of pre-existing video surveillance equipment, often in excessive numbers, proximity, and in seemingly illogical configurations. Five instances were radially arranged on a telephone pole. Nine instances were observing different sections of a child playground. Twenty-six instances were arranged on a wall of a residential apartment complex, each facing in a seemingly random direction. Instances of SCP-2884-1 appear to function with no visible power source. Disassembly has revealed that instances are constructed of a combination of standard, commercially available electronics and a number of components of unknown origin. Some non-standard components are engraved with the image of a human eye. Instances cease functioning upon disassembly and have so far remained non-functional thereafter. SCP-2884-2 are a collection of humanoid entities. Instances are physically and genetically identical, lack fingerprints, hair, reproductive organs, and eyes. The ocular cavities of instances are hollow and show signs of surgical removal of the ocular organs. Instances are found wearing identical dark blue riot gear and helmets. Atop each helmet is a mounted camera with specialized cabling connected directly to the brainstem. 
Instances of 28842 appear to be in an area with an instance of 28841 observes a perceived criminal act. Instances will appear in groups of 2 to 10 in the nearest location and under an immediate observation by nearby individuals or video equipment and will then proceed to punish the offender. Forms of punishment include partial or incomplete removal of article of clothing from the offender's person, assault with a blunt weapon, encircling the offender and shouting loudly for up to five minutes, restraint followed by an instance facing the offender and reciting a nonsensical version of the right to silence before offenders physically carried to a location outside of view of nearby individuals and video equipment. As of the 1st of September 2015, a total of 84 Foundation personnel are embedded in the United Kingdom National Crime Agency, British Security Industry Association, and associated security organizations within the United Kingdom. These personnel carry out the following directives. Promotion of mass surveillance in the United Kingdom and legislation supporting an increase in the installation of video surveillance equipment in urban areas. Investigation of any kind in all possible connections to the group, or entity known as the Overseer. Very well. Why were you and your associates assaulting those people? Violation of law 51384. No gathering of more than two individuals is to take place within 8.4 meters of a bird bath. Could you explain why that makes sense to you? The law is the law. The overseer makes the laws. The laws make sense. I see. Who is this overseer? The Overseer makes the laws. The Overseer watches everything. Alright. And what purpose do these laws serve? The Overseer sees a future free of crime, filth, and degradation. Free of corruption. Free of chemical addiction. Free of littering. Free of murder. Free of rape. Free of antisocial behavior. Free of- That's quite enough. Tell me, how does this Overseer see all these things? Through. The eyes. What happened to your eyes? The ones in your skull? Never had them. Don't need them. Are you sure? Because from here, without your visor, they look like they've been surgically removed. Never had them. Don't need them. I see. Now, back to this overseer. Do you know where he is now? The overseer is everywhere. There are eyes to see. 
The Overseer is watching you right now. SCP-072 Object Class Safe SCP-072 is a shadowy and translucent projection which resembles a long hand, the fingers of which taper to a sharp point. Detailed recording of it is difficult, and it does not manifest at light levels above 5 lux. Instances have only been observed to manifest when a human enters REM sleep while located in a bed infected by SCP-072 and leaves a foot or feet exposed to open air. If these conditions are satisfied, it will emerge and appear to use its pointer finger to tap on the subject's foot until they're awake. Subjects have reported that at this point they were unable to move, showing symptoms similar to sleep paralysis. This continues as long as SCP-072 is visible. SCP-072 will then use its pointed fingers to cut portions of flesh off the exposed parts of the subject's foot or feet. It will return to within the bed in between each removal, emerging without the collected material. This will continue until it has taken all of the exposed foot or feet, stopping at the ankle. Though subjects exposed to SCP-072 report this process to be immensely painful, its paralytic effects render them unable to scream or call for help. It is unknown if manifestations of SCP-072 feed on the collected material or use them for some other purpose. As long as the wounds are properly treated, its effects are not fatal, but have been observed to cause psychological damage relating to sleep in the future. There is also a secondary effect. Any bed with an approximately 10 meter vicinity of a bed which manifests the effects of SCP-072 will also host an instance of SCP-072. Destruction of a bed affected by SCP-072 reveals no anomalous materials and no trace of biological material removed from subjects. All known instances of SCP-072 are contained in a holding cell. Access is allowed only during authorized testing procedures. Without prior approval of the Senior Researcher Grant, no materials created for the purpose of being slept on are introduced into a 15 meter vicinity of the holding cell. Instances of SCP-072 were first discovered in an apartment building in Michigan. After local media reports on its effects caused by a local panic which drew the attention of embedded Foundation agents. SCP-1562 Object Class Safe SCP-1562 is a metal playground slide. It was acquired from an abandoned playground on the outskirts of after several children in the area went missing. The object's anomalous effects only manifest when a person slides down headfirst on their stomach with their arms tucked down at their sides. Any other orientation of the body or limbs while sliding results in no effect, and only human beings are affected. When a person slides down SCP-1562 in the aforementioned manner, they will disappear instantly and completely at approximately 15 centimeters before the end of the slide. So far, no one who has disappeared while using 1562 this way has been recovered. Attempts to tie safety lines to test subjects in an effort to pull them back have ended in failure as the tether is severed at the moment the test subject disappears. Communication with test subjects that have disappeared is possible and ongoing. SCP-1562 is currently quarantined in Testing Lab 46V in Site-24. The door to the lab remains locked at all times. As testing is currently suspended, all access is denied unless special clearance is granted by Dr. Carver. D2445, can you hear me? Yes, Doctor. I can hear you. Where are you now? I don't know. Some sort of very small tunnel. 
It's really cramped. Can you get me out now? Can you describe it to me? No, it's too dark. I can't see anything. And I'm stuck. Stuck? How? I'm still head first on my stomach. And my body's at an angle. But I'm in some sort of small tunnel. And I'm stuck. I'm completely surrounded by rock or dirt on all sides. I don't have enough room to raise my head or move my arms. And I can't move forward. I really want to get out of here now. We're going to try. Can you see anything? Anything at all? No, I told you, I can't see anything. I'm getting kind of freaked out now. I'm not really claustrophobic, but this is pretty fucking uncomfortable. Put me out of here! Unfortunately, your safety line was severed when you disappeared, so we can't pull you out. We'll try to figure out another way to retrieve you. For now, just stay calm and keep talking to No, me. no, no, no. You need to get me out now. I can't handle much more of this. Please stay calm. We will have you out there as soon as we can. Okay, I was able to worm my way forward a little bit. But my head hit something. What did you hit? It's a uh, shoe, I think. It's small. Jesus. What's wrong? Get me out of here, Doctor. Get me out of here now. Calm down. We'll get you out of there as soon as we can. No, you need to get me out of here right now. The shoe. It's so tiny. Are you still there, D2445? Please. Please. I don't want to be in here anymore. We're going to send someone in to pull you out. It started talking. What started talking? A little boy did. But it didn't make any sense. Tell me what he said. He... just kept asking where he was. And I told him I didn't know. But I don't think he was really talking to me. Because he didn't respond to my voice. And he told me to stop crying when I was actually sort of calm. What else? Was he moving at all during this? I don't think so. He started screaming and I told him to shut up, but he kept screaming and crying and asking for his mommy. And then he finally stopped. And shortly after that he contacted me again. Please, get me out now. Okay. Uh, we're sending someone in. Don't panic if you hear or feel something behind you. Please hurry. My chest is... D-8600, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Doctor. What is your situation? We're, we're not getting anything on the video feed. I'm in... Some sort of cave or tunnel. Through the small and dark. My headlamp stopped working as soon as I got in here. Are you able to move at all? Um not sure I can get my arms up in front of me, but I can sort of wiggle my way forward. Wait, what's this? Hey! Are you alright? D8600? I just bumped into someone's foot. Not moving at all. Hey, are you okay down there? That could be D2445. Davies, try D2445's radio. I, I, I can hear his radio, I think. I can hear Davies' voice. Hmm. D2445 isn't responding. And we're not picking up Davies' voice on your radio through our end. Yes, Doctor. I can hear you. Davies, turn that off. I can hear him through D8600s. Hey man, I'm glad. I don't know. Some sort of very small tunnel. It's really cramped. Can you get me out now? D2445, listen to me. D8600 is behind you and he's there to help get you out. No, it's too dark. I can't see anything. And I'm stuck. Hey man, it's okay. We know you're stuck and we're both going to get out of here. I'm head first on my stomach, and my body's at an angle, and I'm in some sort of small 
in it, and I'm stuck. I'm completely surrounded by rock and dirt on all sides. I don't have enough room to raise my head or move my arms, and I can't move forward. I really want to get out of here now. Okay, man, it's okay. I'm gonna try and get my arms up and I'll grab a hold of your ankles. They should be able to pull us out of here then. No, I told you, I can't see anything. I'm getting kind of freaked out now. I'm not really claustrophobic, but this is pretty fucking uncomfortable. Put me out of here! And I'm working on it. Have the some... N600 stopped talking. Something isn't right here. D2445 is just repeating everything he said to me when we initially made radio contact with him. No, 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 no. You need to get me out now. I can't handle this like this. It's okay, just calm down. Doctor, I think he's just freaking out. I almost got my arms in front of me. Okay, I was able to run my way through it a little bit. But my head is something. No, he's literally repeating his side of the conversation, word for word. Did he actually move at all, like he just said he did? Uh, I, I don't think so. Okay, this is getting kind of creepy, but I've got his ankles. See if you can pull us out now. It's, uh, she, I think. It's small. Jesus. Doctor, what is he talking about? Can you just pull us out of here? Get me out of here, Doctor. Get me out of here now. We can't pull you out. I'm sorry. No, you need to get me out of here right now. I'm sure. What the fuck are you talking about? Why can't you pull us out? What does he mean the shoe's so tiny? What the fuck is going on, Doctor? Please. Please. I can't even get you in here anymore. D-8600. Unfortunately, the rope we tied to you was severed as soon as you vanished. We didn't realize that would happen. It's still not Okay, um, okay, then I'll, I'll try inching my way backwards. I, I won't be able to bring him with me, though. Good luck, D8600. We'll stay in contact with you for the time being. He just kept asking where he was. And I couldn't even know. I did not think he was really talking to me. Because he didn't respond to my voice. And I told him to stop crying when I was actually sort of calm. It would be a lot easier if he would just shut the fuck up. I don't think so. He started screaming and I told him to shut up. But he kept screaming and crying and asking for his mommy. And then he finally stopped. But shortly after that he contacted me again. Please get me out now. Shut the fuck up already! Are you making progress, D8600? Uh, little. It's not easy, but I'm getting there. Yes, getting kind of stale in here. Hope there's enough air for me to make it back. Did, it, did he finally shut up? Uh, I'm not hearing him on my end anymore, either. <laughs> Thank God for that. I was starting to think that. What is it? You were starting to think that... D8600? Are you still there? What happened? SCP-323 Object Class Euclid SCP-323 is the skull of an unidentified cervid with a pair of antlers growing from the left and right sides. It shows signs of damage consistent with outside exposure with regular pitting, scarring, and weathering across the object, bleaching on the upper surfaces, and a missing lower mandible. The rear of the skull features an approximately centered ovid gap gaining access to an interior space 16 centimeters deep. This gap shows signs of tool use indicating that it was carved with tools, possibly stone.
SCP-323 displays the ability to react to aural, tactile, and visual stimuli. Testing has revealed it appears to have a field of view similar to that of other cervids, and has responded to visual stimuli from up to 50 meters away. The targeting of specific members of personnel, various attempts to breach containment, and the violent reaction towards speakers of the French and English languages suggests a level of sapience, however this is unconfirmed. SCP-323 is capable of limited locomotion, typically in the form of small movements and vibrations. In most cases, it will only locomote in the event of various stimuli, such as moving away when touched or turning when personnel are present within its containment chamber. It has demonstrated the ability to make larger movements such as a lunging at personnel and repeatedly attempting to force its way through containment measures. SCP-323 exerts an influential effect in a radius extending roughly 15 meters from itself. Individuals within this radius will begin experiencing cannibalistic thoughts and urges, violent outbursts, and impaired judgment after approximately one hour of continuous exposure. Roughly 74% of individuals who reach this point will attempt to place their heads through the gap present in the back of SCP-323. If an individual is incapable of fitting their heads through the gap, attempts will be made to bludgeon their heads against nearby hard surfaces until either the individual's head fits, the individual loses consciousness, or the individual expires. Once the individual has fit their head through SCP-323, the individual is classified as SCP-323-1. Within 10 minutes of putting SCP-323 on, SCP-323-1 will undergo drastic physical alterations. They will experience a rapid loss of body fat, body hair, and pigmentation. SCP-323-1's metabolism will experience a dramatic increase, requiring a constant caloric intake with starvation occurring anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes if no self-preservation efforts are made. In order to sustain its increased metabolism, it will actively seek out and eat other individuals for sustenance until expiration. It will feed only upon humans. It is presumed that SCP-323-1 is capable of receiving sustenance from other sources, but chooses not to. SCP-323 is kept in a concrete containment cell in Site-91. The object is restrained in the center of the cell. The cell is surveyed remotely at all times, and any signs of activity are to be reported. No personnel enters 323's containment cell except to examine the integrity of its restraint measures. The restraint measures are examined bi-weekly, and any signs of damage are repaired immediately. All personnel who enter 323's containment cell are accompanied by an armed guard, Personnel are not to be within its containment cell for longer than 45 minutes, and any communication around 323 is written or spoken in a language that is other than English or French. SCP 2863 Object Class Keter SCP-2863 refers to a population of spectral entities resembling giant 30 meter tall animated human skeletons that manifest within the borders of Japan. The exact number of instances is not known, but at least 206 separate individuals have been catalogued. Instances will only appear after sunset as they lose corporeal form if exposed to light brighter than approximately 1.1 lux. The exact process by which this occurs is currently not understood. Disappearance in this manner is temporary, as instances have been sighted on nights following their neutralization. It's not currently known whether or not SCP-2863 instances are sapient, as their behavior consists solely of the capture and consumption of humans. They are capable of moving very quietly, though manifestations are commonly preceded by a faint sound, most commonly described as rattling. 
Due to their silence, size, and proclivity for very dark areas, they can easily and quickly catch humans on foot. Once an instance has caught a human victim, it will bite off its victim's head and drain their blood into its mouth. This blood is apparently absorbed into 2863's bone, despite the lack of any digestive mechanisms. Due to increasing urban development and foundation monitoring, no fatalities due to these instances have been recorded since the 31st of October, 2008. Due to the impermanent nature of SCP-2863 instances, long-term containment is functionally impossible. Should an instance of SCP-2863 be sighted in the field, Mobile Task Force Omicron 3 is to move in and neutralize the entity by the use of ultra-bright floodlights. Any civilians exposed to SCP-2863 are to be given Class A amnestics and released. SCP-525, Object Class Euclid SCP-525 consists of multiple disjoined arthropod legs. DNA identification has been inconclusive, but the closest match so far is to the brown recluse spider. The base of each leg ends in several minute hooks capable of perforating flesh. When alone or in proximity with fewer than six others, SCP-525 is inert. When eight components of SCP-525 are brought within range of each other, the legs will immediately crawl into a group and attach themselves into a single entity, referred to as 5251. At this stage, the speed of its locomotion greatly increases, and it will attempt to make contact with the closest human, or animal. When a suitable animal is found, 5251 will climb directly towards the animal's eye. Having centered itself over a socket, Four legs will secure the eyelid while the others extract the eye. Despite 5251's rapid movements, extreme care is taken not to damage the eye during the extraction, severing the optic nerves and central retinal vein. Once the eye is free from the original owner's socket, 5251 will implant the base of each leg into the eye. Close inspection shows that the hooks at the base extend, effectively rooting the leg into position. If allowed to remain, 5251 will lay what appear to be eggs in the socket of the host before climbing off. When in the possession of an eye, 5251 is no longer hostile and its movement is somewhat impeded. Curiously, 5251 does not respond to visual stimuli, suggesting that it does not use the eye for sight. Over time, the eye dehydrates, eventually turning the same reddish color as SCP-525. After two to three weeks, 5251 will abandon the eye and begin a search for another. Outside testing conditions, the individual components of SCP-525 are stored in separate glass containers. No more than six components are stored in the same room within 15 meters of each other. All currently existing components are accounted for at the storage site 23 in lockers. Only Class D personnel are authorized to handle 525 specimens. All supervising staff wear protective eyewear during testing. SCP-3667 Object Class Famuel SCP-3667 is a spatial anomaly located within a sinkhole at the bottom of the Peace Kimberlite Diamond Mine in Mirni Saka Republic. Although ground penetrating radar or magnetotelluric imaging techniques do not reveal any unusual structures below the mine or town of Mirni, the sinkhole contains a Leibniz class spatial anomaly, approximately 5 kilometers at its widest point and 6 kilometers at its highest point consisting of a subterranean network of caves and passages. To date, 24 unique species, classified as SCP-3667-1A through SCP-667-1X are recorded. Certain species are sapient, and the vast majority are anomalous. All species display hostility to humans. Approximately 12,000 anomalous human beings have been reported, classified collectively as SCP-3667-2, most suffering from varying degrees of psychological distress. A variety of machinery, mostly wooden, 
designed to imprison and torture humans or humanoid figures classified as SCP-3667-3 have also been seen. SCP-3667 is continually monitored by members of the MTF Chi-5 with additional personnel requested from Site-574 as necessary. As of January 14th, 2012, the Mirni mine has been outfitted with surface-to-air missile systems around its perimeter to eliminate potential SCP-3667-1 instances. Civilians are discouraged from entering the ground on the pretext of unstable terrain and will be detained and amnesized if discovered trespassing. Any potential excursions into SCP-3667 must be approved by both the Site-574 Director and the Regional Administrator. Due to the large Foundation presence within SCP-3667, as well as the continued cooperation of the sentient sub-instances, containment procedures have been reduced accordingly. MTF G5 will continue to exterminate any non-compliant or non-sentient SCP-3667-1 sub-instances that pose a threat to the Foundation personnel, but their duties have been expanded to include a. Mapping and analyzing SCP-3667's topography and composition, and b. Determining methods of utilizing SCP-3667-3 to contain existing SCPs. The sinkhole containing the entrance to SCP-3667 was formed on December 17, 2010, when workers at the mine performed a routine drilling operation. When the drill unexpectedly encountered the spatial anomaly and penetrated the cavern system of SCP-3667, the resulting cave-in killed one of the workers while injuring several others. Their initial exploration of the cave system identified some of the aforementioned stone structures and possible human remains. While attempting to contact their supervisors, an instance of SCP-3667-1 violently emerged from the sinkhole and immolated the survivors. Foundation assets were scrambled from nearby Site-574 after intercepting dozens of police calls describing a winged human creature. Fires and collapsed buildings across the town of Mirni delayed the response time of the Foundation personnel considerably. Ground troops proved ineffective in subduing or terminating the instance, before a Foundation helicopter was able to eliminate the threat. In the immediate aftermath, the town of Mirni was airily amortized by Foundation operatives, and the extent of fire damage was attributed to a gas leak at the nearby Mirni Polytechnic Institute. This is Anna. Check, check. Honest. Check. Gasly, check. Check. Command, do we have permission to enter the anomaly? You're all reading fine. Whenever you're ready. Safety's off, boys. We already know there's shit down there. seconds. Can you do a Hume check? Standard procedure. Hume's okay. Vitals look good too. Carry on. Probably just the way the portal works that brought us here. Stable. Stationary. Probably skull fragments from that thing's last bit. 
Brooklyn. Nothing we haven't seen before. Command, be advised that judging by sounds, we're getting close to moving water. We might have to attempt to cross it. Understood. <laughs> Nasty. Command, please be advised that it's less ranking here. I'm gonna... I think it's coming from up ahead. sample of that water, if you will. Josh should be in your supply packs. Roger that. Gregory, that's you. Damn it. Personal. This feels personal. Team One, you're operating on a very short clock here. The boys up the hill want you out of there by 1500 hours at the latest. Understood, Command. Boris, Vasily, you're with me. Gregory, we'll wait for you on the other side. on the side of the river command. Can anyone else confirm? This might be evidence of the remains of some kind of structure. Is that Sealy? There's definitely part of a wall over here. Structure confirmed. Alright. Can we get any idea of possible age, Team One? Does it look occupied? I'm guessing... a hundred. A few hundred years old. Some of these bricks are... Disintegrating. What's abandoned? We could be doing some sort of something like that here that we have. Big promise on that. What do we do if we make contact? You are not cleared for that kind of interaction. If anything sentient still alive in there, we'll send a specialist team another day. Your mission is being cut short. I want you to scout out the extent of the structure and then we're bringing you out. There's what looks like a hallway leading in. Let's make this quick. Command, we've entered some kind of large circular room. There aren't any windows, but it looks like one of those church domes that look light blue. There's just rock at the top where the hole should be, though. Some kind of artwork on the floor here. Four hallways leading deeper into the structure here, Command. This thing might be bigger than I realized. Do you want us to keep pushing, or...? Do what you can, Anna. Your call. Okay. Let's do what we can. Team 1, we're going to split up. Norris, you're taking tunnel number 1. Vasily, you're next. Gregory's on tunnel number 3, and I'll take the last one. Anything goes wrong, you sound the alarm, and we all retreat back to the portal. Anna, you don't have I'm to- I'm going to get this thing searched for you, Command. And I want you watching all of us like hawks in there. Tell us the second that shit hits the fan. Copy that.
Gregory, get out of there! My feet on this hill. They can't back up. You do not have the mark of a hero. How did you find your way to this place, little mortals? You should not be here. Anna, take Vasily and Boris and get out of there! of the entity. Is there any present danger? Yeah, the thing's here too, but it's missing, uh, most of its head. The guys might want to take a look at it anyway. Affirmative. Looks like we kind of communicated with sentient entities after all. Sorry about that, Command. Just hang tight. You bet. SCP-1506, Object Class, Keter. SCP-1506 is the designation for the global phenomenon which spontaneously generates instances of SCP-1506-1. These are designations for anomalous colonies of at least approximately 900 spiders of mixed species. By applications of multiple varieties of spider silk, they are able to build a complex web structure, less dense than air in which the spiders may live. It exhibits remarkable behavior, as individual spiders are rarely seen working in cooperation and never in cross-species cooperation. It has been found at altitudes of up to 18 kilometers. In order to change altitude, the volume of it is increased or decreased, suggesting the web structure is being constantly maintained. Thus far, it is unknown how spiders are able to detect their prey at this height. 1506's preferred method of predation is to spin a web to the ground from an altitude. Any animalia touching the spider web will instantly adhere and be unable to remove from the web. Only live animal matter exhibits this effect. When enough food has been caught, SCP-1506 will reel in the web at considerable speeds. When it has fully reeled in its prey, the web structure will engulf the animal. Consumption of prey takes place over a few days depending on both the size of the prey and the colony. Humans take approximately five days for an average sized colony to digest. The largest single prey animal recorded has been an elk, taking 11 days to digest. Waste is allowed to fall freely, leaving a desiccated husk that will often shatter on impact. Using remote cameras to explore the structure has proven a failure, as all attempts have had the drone immobilized by the web. Spider-mounted cameras have failed in a similar manner. The only successful method to obtain internal visuals is through prey-mounted camera which allows only for stationary video feeds. SCP-1506 was first brought to the Foundation's attention in 2004 when a viral video thought to originate in Chile showed a man walking through the streets at 0247 local time. He suddenly stops walking whilst looking very startled and begins brushing at his arms and face before vanishing. High speed analysis shows that he was dragged vertically out of frame. The footage has been doctored to remove the three frames and has been publicly revealed to be part of the viral campaign for energy drink.
This is Johnson, your co-pilot for today. We do apologize for the turbulence back there. We do our best to make your flight as smooth as possible, but the occasional hiccup will happen. We thank you for understanding. Okay. What the hell just happened? I, I thought it was a cloud. Clouds don't make a bang when you hit them. Set all the fuel safety options off. I hope so. Sand for miles. <laughs> 